want the whole world to know about my I love ya and I'll never try to hurt ya. I want ya to know that I'm here for you forever true because you're my my mother raised us up on selling Johnny cakes and porter bun, bread and bun and tarts and stuff like that. Uh, me and my four, three other brothers would go and sell it out in the streets. And we had no problem with that as a young child. Um, it got a little bit difficult when you went to high school with the fact that I didn't have many things that I needed in school. Like when it was time to do artwork, I would have to wait on someone else to finish with their tie-dye to, for me to tie-dye my clothing or um, when um, you, you need some, sim the simple basic thing, like when it's time for a break, you don't have no money to buy things, so you would have to go and buy for other people and um, then they would give you something. And then with all of that, you're, go you're going to school and then it, the school itself was a challenge because I was smart, but I wasn't interested in school. I didn't have that interest. so. Um, that in itself was a challenge. The teachers were trying to be nice, but that was, for me, it wasn't sufficient. I just couldn't take that, have to, having to try to do school and go and sell stuff in the evening. Um, I met my wife when I was about 22. Um, David and I met on a blind date through a mutual friend. I told him to come and visit me at my house. So he bought something to eat. He bought a huge pizza, uh, a bottle of wine, and a Miranda, orange Miranda. And I had already told him that I had a daughter before. And now that orange Miranda is the thing that got him through the door. Because most men just want to get to know you. They're not interested in your child or your children. But he brought that soda for my daughter, and he didn't even know her, know her name, nothing. So that shows, that shows character, that shows what he is inside. And that is what made a bigger impression on me. She tend to bring some kind of stability to what I, I had seen in life. I was just all over the place doing things that I was not supposed to do. And she kind of gave me some kind of purpose. I'm talking about like getting a piece of land, building a house, you know, and that was a kind of turning point for me from not ha look, having something to live for. I didn't think about committing suicide, but I didn't have a purpose for living either. In spite of the inspiration that she gave to me to let me want it, something in life, it still wasn't sufficient for me to have a good life. I was still doing a lot of things that I wasn't supposed to do. I was still making bad choices, getting drunk, and not, um, not even know how I reached home at that night. You know, I remember one time I left from a place, and I was so drunk that when I reached home, the engine was broken, like, completely, because I was driving so fast, and I was in the wrong gear. And, and I, did a lot of, I did a lot of stuff like that that showed me that I had no care. I still did not have enough cares for my life to care about whether I live or die. He was going out by himself many weekends and I would stay home with the kids and sometimes he would come back in the morning and I would be up late at night and you know, crying and you know, God, please help me to go to sleep, help me to stop crying and he would come back and it would be like nothing to him. He was just like, I'm home. My neighbors, my neighbors who lived beside me for like four years, they were constantly inviting me to their church or to their fellowship and we used to loan talk about them and push them off and stuff. And that night I went home and my wife said, Dave, these people are so nice to us. At least let's just do a, you know, show them that we, we appreciate their niceness, you know? And we went there and um, when you got there, there were people who were giving their testimonies of their life, what they have been through and what God has done for them. And I'm listening to these people and I'm thinking, these people just want more people to come into the church for like build more collection. Men, and we went there that night and um, there were three people giving their testimonies of what God has done for them in their life, where they were. And one of them in particular was someone who was living the way I was living. And um, afterwards, the pastor said, you could come up and let us pray for you. 
and I'm thinking to myself, if I get up from here, then everybody will know that I'm probably like one of those people. And I don't want to go up there and let everybody know what I have done. So um, he said something very importantly that minute as I was thinking of that. He said, it's not me who will change you. He said, I'm just a messenger. He said, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he said he would restore that relationship back to you with God. And your peace will start and your joy will start. And I'm like, man, if this guy not just telling me this because he wants more collection, uh, well, I'm praying, to, I'm, I'm start praying now, I'm believing, uh, I'm taking a leap of faith. I'm saying, I'm praying, I'm saying, God, I close my eyes, I say, God, it, if this guy is not trying to get me here to get my money for collection, if this guy is not trying to build his church with numbers, and you are for real, then this is exactly what I need. Waking up every morning, having my wife beside me, and my children are with me, and is priceless. And I'll never try to